Um, thank you very much for joining today's webinar. Um, I'm glad to see you all joining in at the moment. So the more I speak, the more you join. So that's very good to see here. Um, so I would just um, like to thank you once again for joining this webinar, as we believe that um, it is really important for the food and beverage industry to understand um, the compliance um, aspects of exporting to a third country, in this case, China. And for this reason, we have um, our Rafa Jimenez um, that will be giving you a briefing, a bit of an introduction about the food and beverage market and why it can be an opportunity for your products. And then we have Anne from uh, Reach 24H, uh, who takes care of uh, the regulatory compliance for companies in the food and beverage industry. So um, I would just like to remind you that the, we have a Q&A box section at the bottom of the of the screen or a chat where you can send your uh, where you can send in your questions. Um, even while uh, our presenters share uh, their knowledge about the Chinese market, and I will be helping you forwarding these questions. So I highly welcome you to, to send them. And um, I will just now give the floor to Rafa for his uh, introduction. Uh, thank you, Ilaria. Thank you, Rafa. I, I will stop uh, your screen sharing. And I start with mine. Please tell me if you can see. Yes, very good. We can see it. You can put it in. Uh, yes, perfect. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Hilaria. Also, big thanks to Anne. Uh, I know Anne's company reached 24 many years ago, and they are among the top experts in regulatory and compliance aspects uh, for importing all sorts of products, but also especially food and drinks. So I think it's a great opportunity and uh, I want to be thankful again to Anne that agreed with us to spend some time helping you. And uh, I strongly recommend to connect with her in the future because I'm sure the company has all the answers to the regulatory aspects of importing food and drinks uh, to China, which is, is not difficult, but there are you know, some compliance things that you need to know. Okay, so I will be short and I will not step in the areas covered by Anne. I will just try to justify again why China deserves from you and the Estonian food and drinks sector to have a look uh, to China, to the Chinese market. I'm not saying that you are obliged to sell in China. Of course, that is your decision, but uh, I always suggest you at least have a look and evaluate the possibility to uh, consider selling in China. First of all, we always recommend for people interested in China to join WeChat. Here you can see the reason. If you are in WeChat, Ilaria will send to you the presentation via WeChat immediately. So uh, once we, we, we meet the promise never met by the companies that you will have later the presentation, <laughs> we want to avoid that. So I'm sure Ilaria will share at least with the people from your side that is using uh, uh, which, which I strongly recommend. Let's talk a bit about the food and drinks uh, sector. Uh, let me go back. This is what you see on the screen is the last gathering of the mm, uh, Chinese, of the Congress of the party recently finished in Beijing. And when interviewed, in the government report that the prime minister, the premier, presents yearly in this congress, you could see or read this statement. So my point is that food is always of extreme importance for China for several reasons 
they have some difficulties in being self-sustainable. The obvious reason is it's a large country, it's a continent, and they have to feed 1.4 billion people. So while we don't know what could happen to you if you are doing robotics, maybe in 10 years time, China is doing better robots than you. We can guarantee, and this is for sure, that the food industry, the foreign food industry and drinks will always have an opportunity in China. This is not a short time frame opportunity. This is a permanent opportunity and is reflected in the statement of the premier. You might ask, what is the situation post COVID in China? Uh, it's a very relevant question. Uh, the best way to measure is to check how the retail sales of consumer goods go in China. You can see this is when COVID started by mid January or end of January and the confinements started. You can see that all the retail plummeted immediately, but you can also see how through March and April situation improved. So it's a kind of recovery, which is still, we don't know if it's a U or if it's a V or if it will be like an L, or, but you can see the immediate effect of finishing the confinement in China, how retail and food and drinks is a very important part of retail. Actually, it did grow 37% during the people that, during the time people was, in a lockdown so we are we trust that the near future will be back again like before covid at least for the food and drinks industry with probably some changes in the behavior of consumers and i'm sure Anne uh, will cover that uh, let me share with you what how the baltics or nordics are doing there is something curious if you will look, we look into the companies registered at china customs to sell food and drinks in china you can check here that estonia is leading the pack we have 144 companies which is more than finland okay however if we go into the exports of uh, each of countries and i collected the latest data because it's January, April 2020, you see that there is no correlation between the number of companies registered and the exports. This is not uh, a failure of Estonia only. Before I was working for European Union and I have seen many times across all the European Union member states, exports require persistence. Sometimes companies export once, and then they forget, they find troubles or problems and they do not have, let's say, the strong spirit to persist, to continue. So the number reflects many companies are interested. However, for some reason, uh, the, th the things do not progress well or the companies do not persist in the effort to China. And we are here to help you uh, to surmount any difficulty you might find. Uh, if you compare with other Baltic countries, there are some curious things that uh, we can extract from the numbers. I mean, probably Latvia can claim they export more fruits than Estonia for some simple reasons. They have more protocols with China than we have. On the other hand, Estonia has uh, seafood as part of the protocols signed with China. But we cannot see any reason why Latvia is exporting 10 times the quantity of uh, beverage than Estonia. There's no real reason for that. The same happens for Lithuania. Someone might claim, oh, they export a lot of cereals. Yes, but this started just in December last year because they managed to sign a protocol for wheat and we do not have such protocols. So this is not to blame Estonia for not exporting wheat. Uh, but you see that Estonia is doing well with white powder an export to China, uh, Lithuania is bigger than Estonia, but we are quite close. But again, we find this difference between beverage and between Lithuania and Estonia. So this probably could
could be fixed, just making some, not extra effort, but probably pointing to doing things similar to what our friends from Lithuania are, are doing. With Finland, uh, it's curious because actually they based all their meat, food and drinks exports in two things, which is meat and they reproduce. Okay, so, and they have less companies than us, but uh, we would like to learn something of our neighbors and that we can comment in any other webinar because they are doing very interesting things. And I would like to transmit to you two takeaways. One, uh, I would not say only China, across Asia, uh, food and drinks and agriculture products in general, it is a permanent opportunity, not only for the next year or the next few years, it's permanent. And Estonia is within the economic space and political space of the European Union. Believe me, when you live abroad, you realize that the European Union is the true world's powerhouse. No one can compete with the European Union in food, drinks, and agriculture. And you will always have support at European Union level and country level for one reason because it's not possible to relocate the soil or the land or the, sometimes the expertise, which can be transformed also into exporting what? Knowledge and a service. The second takeaway is that uh, Chinese government cannot continue using uh, building bridges and ports and airports and roads as a lever to pull up the economy. They need to trust consumption and that is consumers. So Chinese government is very interested in helping the consumers to have access to more options, particularly in the food and drinks uh, assortment of products they can find in China, and that requires import. So that's another reason why we feel optimistic about uh, China imports of food and drinks. And a third reason, a recent panel is as recent as April 2020, a poll among thousands of consumers of what are the first intention after COVID to increase expenditures. You can see across all the Asian countries that number one is food and drinks. Okay, so food and drinks is a need not only China, across Asia, and that is why we want to, or I want to encourage you to pay attention to China and to the rest of Asia. Uh, there's always, more than meets the eye. So I suggest to look beyond the immediate. I know all of us and all of you are passing struggles with the COVID situation, but looking beyond the current circumstances, uh, I would like to say also that there's more than meets the eye when we think about selling food and drinks in China. Probably if something is not been on sale in China, the, the reason can be that the category is not well known for the Chinese consumers, that the import tariffs are very high, that the compliance with the regulations are difficult, that someone is dominating the market. All of this is true. And we can help with all of this. Let me tell you an example. The import tariff for maybe cider is high, and we have discussed with cider companies in Estonia, but as recent as two days ago, China has decided to lower the import tariff of sugar and probably will do the same with the drinks containing sugar. So being alert about these things can change the situation from an expensive product to import to affordable product to import. And with all of this, and together with companies like Rich24, I promise we can help you to analyze of these things before trying China. But remember, more the, usually the reason why a product is not in China is this one, because the foreign brand never tried. And this is the main takeaway I want to share with you before finishing. And, and also, I always like to give this message encouraging the food and drink industry. We all talk about technology, robots, startups, blah, blah, blah. This is super important and it's higher than value. But this is interesting. You have here the stock quotation of Google. 
you see it's fantastic, right? Going up, 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 up. I added Facebook, which is also a technology company. Fantastic over the years, right? This is a five years time frame. You can see how the shares are going up. A very good investment. We see on the press every day. Let's put the superstar, which is Amazon. You can see Amazon better than Google and than Facebook. Amazing, right? But let me put who's the company doing better in any stock exchange in the world. And it's a Chinese company. And they don't do robots. They don't do social media. They are not Alibaba. They are not Facebook or Google. It's this company. They make spirits. And you can see that they are above Amazon. And they have been growing better than all these technology companies over the last five years. So it's not all technology, also food and drinks are very important and China is a very important market to consider. With this, I've finished and uh, I give pass again to Ilaria and I will be here. So if you have any questions, please feel free. Uh, I will be with you all the time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rafa, for uh, for this background information about China. Um, again, as Rafa says, if you have any question, feel free to type them in in uh, the Q and A box that you find at the bottom of the screen or in the chat if that's more convenient to you. Um, but probably now time for Anne. Uh, so I will give the floor to Anne um, and her presentation. Um, yep, yeah, you can share your screen. Perfect. Um, you should unmute yourself and then we can hear you. Perfect. Hi. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much and uh, welcome. Um, please. Okay, and then I will start. And thank you for um, those representatives from Estonia Food Enterprises. So nice to meet you. I'm account manager of Rich 24 H Consulting Group. Actually, I used to be a regulatory analyst working with Camlink. And then someday I think we've got experienced tech team and we've got editors who update regulatory news on website. And I don't want to just be the one behind the Camlink website. So I want to know more about our readers, our clients. I want to exchange minds with them and provide a nice compliance solutions or advice for them. So that's why I'm now business development. Based on my own experience as a regulatory analyst and business development, I've organized three online and offline seminars that this year to help enterprises better understand the importance of compliance management. This is the fourth webinar. I'm not an excellent English speaker, so if I don't make myself clear during this webinar, you could let me know afterwards. I'd, I'd love to clarify. Um, and to begin with, I need to introduce our company a little bit because this webinar is sponsored by our company. And we are a compliance company headquartered in Hangzhou, China. That's where I am. We also have eight other branches or offices around the globe, like in Ireland, Italy, and the UK. If you come to Hangzhou, China, we'd love to host you guys. And so what do we do as a consulting company? Our role is like a law firm, but we don't handle lawsuits. We help clients to get their products comply with China regulations before export and during market circulation. Our expertise is food, cosmetics, food contact materials, and chemicals. Um, and we, what we often do is evaluating compliance products for our clients, like you can, um, you can see. This picture on the left is a part of the green compliance report. And the right one is a label review report. We also provide solutions for companies like you, like how to adjust label, how to adjust formulation, etc. And apart from that, we also have a regulatory and market information platform. I think you all know this. And these are parts of our clients in the food, cosmetic, and chemical industry. Let's just skip this. 
All right, then we come to today's sharing. My content falls into the following five parts. And the first two are about food supervision mechanism. Then I'm gonna share latest data on foods rejected by China customs at ports. After that, I selected several frequently violated rules in each new segment to share. And at last, I want to recap the infamous scandal of formulated dairy beverage happened one or two months ago. Let's start from regular food. Food circulated in China's market is regulated by state administration for market regulation. It includes regular food like snacks, beverages, fruits and vegetables, meat and fish products, nearly all the food products and prepackaged food. It, it also includes special food like infant formula, food for special medical purposes and health food. We'd come to special food in part two. And the medicine is regulated by another um, authority, National Medical Product Administration. The supreme um, law in food industry is Food Safety Law of the People's Republic of China. It is a structural and the principle of food safety. And to standardize food supervision, relevant authorities developed national food safety standards. The GB stands for Guobiao, means national standard. And once locating certain food category, according to your product ingredients, appearance, definitions, etc., the first thing is to make sure the product meet the criteria laid out in product standard, including physiochemical properties, um, contaminants, special labeling requirements, and so on. There are also common requirements for all prepackaged foods like food labeling, food additive standard, nutrition fortifier standard. In China, lab tests are conducted according to China's test methods. There are also good manufacturing practice. I listed 10 types of regular foods which I think are closely related with today's audience. You could see the standards for beer, for beverage, for coca, coca products, biscuits, fruit juice, cheese and milk powder, and many other foods. To be noted, reg regulations lag behind market, market and that means new things are sometimes difficult to find a proper category in GB standard system and need close evaluation to design. Or sometimes even relevant stakeholders need to petition for importing foods without GB standards. I take such a product for example to briefly illustrate a product's compliance procedure. First, there will be a Ingredient review. Exporters provide full breakdown of this product and the image of this product. Ingredient report will draw conclusion on its categorization and suggest Chinese name and the applicable GB standard and the compliance status, etc. And if things are fine, samples are taken to laboratories to and see their properties meet relevant standards or not. And if all this is fine, we review original packaging and the Chinese label. There are Chinese label attached to imported products, and there are also integrated label with both Chinese and foreign language. And label is the first thing cons consumer could know about this product, and it's also the most easily found non-compliant thing. For example, the allergen. Uh, information, the nutrition, the nutrition claim, and the, you can see in this case. Energy calculation is different in China and the exporting country. So because in some countries, fiber is a mandatory content, but in China it is not. So we usually don't count 
fiber into energy. But if we don't, if we do, we will also need to label fiber in nutrient fact table. Then we talk about special food. Special food is a terminology um, brought up for the first time in um, food safety law in 20, 2018, uh, 2015. As far as I know, other countries have no such terminology. In China, it refers to formulated milk powder or liquid milk for babies aged one to three years old. Food have certain functions or supplement vitamins and minerals and foods for patients. The first and the third is understandable. They are special because they are eaten by vulnerable groups. And health food is special because it often related to um, fraudulent and misleading advertising. Sometimes misuse of medicine into health food in order to endorse its health function. Special food is also part of that regular food supervision mechanism. What is different is it has got additional requirements. Infant formula is required to register overseas factory and the receipt. Um, meanwhile, they shall comply with GB10765 and GB10767 product standard. To regulate this niche market, government make rules that each factory could register up to three branch, um, three brands and uh, nine re receipts. Each brand has three receipts, stage one, stage two, and stage three. Health food is required product registration to obtain Blue Hat certificate. The regulations are much more complex, complex than other categories. I made a webinar about the functional food in April on ChemLink. If you want to know more details about this part, you could visit ChemLink for a screen record. What are food for special medical purposes? And um, we can simply regard it as diets for patients. There are formula for lactose intolerant babies, formula for cancer patients, formula for premature or low birth weight infants, formula for diabetes patients and so forth. Before, 90, uh, before 2020, most registered food for special medical purposes are overseas brands like Nestle, Wave, Abud, and the criteria are extremely high. And since 2020, many Chinese enterprises also obtained registration certificates, but um, up to now, less than 100 um, formulas have been registered. Besides these standards, China customs also have their on market access requirements sometimes. So what to consider besides the GB standards? First, there is a registration of overseas food manufacturers. This is closely related with overseas food ex exporters and domestic importers if they want to export animal and plant origin foods to China. These foods are usually of relatively high quarantine risk. Therefore, China Customs established a mechanism to supervise this. To obtain market access to China, exporting countries' government needed to file an application for country level, level approval. China General Administration of Customs will organize the expert panel to review submit materials and conduct on-site on inspection when necessary to evaluate the applicant country's hygiene and the food safety system. Relevant importers and exporters can go to the directory of approved imported food and exporting countries origins to make sure your product and RNG have been granted approval. After country level approval, overseas manufacturers need to register at GAC but not all foods manufacturers, if you are overseas enterprises and you produce 
dairy products, meat products, aquatic products, and bird nests to export to China. Your factory needs registration. And GAC will update the directory of registered overseas manufacturers of imported foods. Current rules governing the registration of overseas food manufacturers is the administrative prohibitions on registration of overseas manufacturers of imported foods. It was published in March 2012 to control food safety risks, risks of animal and plant origin products imported from other countries. The applicable scope is what we just mentioned. And there are also cases when the manufacturer has registered, but they still cannot export as a result of animal ep epidemic alert. For example, pork products imported from Estonia are influenced by African swine fever. Not all foods containing pork is banned, however. It depends on the quarantine risk, like deeply processed foods are likely to be allowed. Before export, seek professional advice. Then I sorted out um, non-compliant food rejected by China Customs in the first four months this year. Let's see. In the four months, um, a total of 489 batches of food weighed at over 9 million kilograms were found non-compliant. Among them, 33% um, are meat and fish and or their processed food. And the major issues are with the quarantine approval, label, sensory index, and uh, certificates. It is followed by 18% flavoring and powdered hot drink. And 15% uh, are vegetables and fruits products. Major problems are with additives and of fruit, fruit drinks, uh, fruit juice, contaminants, um, microbial property, and labels. I don't run through them one by one, just simply, just simply um, skip this. And based on the past two years of non compliance data, I noticed some risks frequently um, violated by uh, importer foods. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure whether I can include some questions here based on the first two um, paragraphs of your presentation, or if you want to get the questions at the end of the presentation. Um, I think it's fine to just uh, stop here and let's right. question. So we had two questions so far. Um, one was related to the uh, organic food. Um, so um, we had Krista asking what is the organic food position and she was referring to the image that you shared at the beginning in the, uh, um, in the second slide, I guess, uh, of the first paragraph. Second slide. Yes, I, I believe it was the second slide where you had the, uh, the overview of the different uh, products that mm -hmm. applies that apply to the companies participating today? And if we are not wrong, Rafa and me, uh, for, uh, yes, exactly this one so she would like to know um, whether organic food I guess position itself in these where it positions itself here um, um, yes please uh, organic food actually um, can be in those uh, food categories organic organic is just a certification that you apply for this certification then you can say you are organic product and yeah. we will also uh, cover that in the next, uh, in the last part. 
Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So I guess in this sense is uh, uh, very similar to the EU regulation with having a certification that claims the organic food uh, nature. Then we have another question from Karel who asks about um, FSMP formula. So if you have an SF FSMP formula in Europe, is it easier and less time consuming to have a, an FSMP in China? Mm, I think it is hard to say whether it will be easier or not, because um, I'm not so familiar with EU's regulations, but in China, um, it has high criteria for the um, for the R and for R and D and for the facility and also for the for the um, supporting materials that prove you can uh, your formula is um, is reasonable and is scientific for such a uh, patient growth. Understood. Thank you. And if uh, Karel, uh, anything is not clear, uh, or if you want to know further, please type in your uh, your next question. Um, then one last question that comes now. Um, always related to the this slide case studies. Uh, what about bread, pastries, and cakes? Where, where do they um, fall in this? Um, sorry, I didn't catch For bread and pastries, um, which category, let's say, could they be defined in, uh, in China? Um, for, um, for, for, for what? For what? Uh, bread, uh, like mian bao, or... Uh, uh, Bake bakery. Yeah. Yes, correct. Um, bakery products is also um, is also um, is also a a type of regular food, and uh, I didn't list all the foods food categories in this slide. And of course, it is a regular food and can be exported to China. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, I see no further question coming in for now, so I guess we can go on with uh, the next paragraph. Sure. Um, the next is... Wait a minute. Can you see? Yes, perfect. Um, and uh, I'm talking about compliance risks in niche segment. And now maybe in other countries, health claims made about a product do not automatically make it a dietary supplement and uh, subject to higher requirements. But in China, health claims can automatically make a product subject to um, blue hat registration. The blue hat is just what we um, mentioned in the special food part. It is health food um, certificate. So pay attention to function claims in product package and Chinese label. And I also compare regular food with health food from several ways in this slide. This could also help you work out your product at a very first and rough stage. Now, firstly, regular food has no function claim, but it has many. It has um, something like vitamin C helps to keep bone and health healthy. Folic acid helps to development of fetus. And if the concentration of specific nutrients in a product reaches a minimum of 15% 15, 15 um, NRV per 100 gram, according to the GB, 28050, that is claim about certain nutrient instead of certain product. I elaborated um, on the rose in an article before, and you may check out. It's also on Cambling. And secondly, regular food are usually um, sub suitable for all groups, while health food have target groups. And thirdly, regular food don't have a mandatory requirements for consumption dosage generally. And uh, while health food has a daily consumption direction, overtaking of some nutrients or active ingredients might cause damage to health. Then we talk about imported baby food. 
The baby food is a popular um, food among Chinese parents, but it is also of high risk. Under China's regulations, baby food refer to infant formula and complementary baby food. There is no such thing in regulations as baby snack. It is a market term. There are many baby snacks like um, puffed food made up from vegetable and fruits and, and the cereals, and they don't meet the definition of infant formula, no complementary baby food. They are categorized as puffed food instead to meet China's standards. Though this product is designed for babies in your exporting country, but it is not allowed to claim um, something like for babies, for infants, and using baby picture is also risky. The principle here is if you want to um, claim this product is specific for certain growth, you need to meet corresponding food standards for this growth. Um, uh, it is similar for foods for the elderly, the pregnancy, and the sports growth. But since national standards for the elderly has not been developed yet, relevant claim will not be illegal. But if you use this, you shall comply with corresponding standards. And for beverage, food additives and label are major non-compliance issues. I take two examples. One is um, one is carbonated drink and the other is drinking water. The product is called a strawberry and lemon flavored carbonated drink. The reason for its rejection as stated in the GAC list is wrong application of food additive caffeine. According to National Food Safety Standard, GB2760, the standard for food additives Caffeine is allowed to be used only in cola carbonated drinks with an upper limit. As the drink is not considered a cola, caffeine cannot be used. From a regu regulatory perspective, there are two types of carbonated drinks. One is carbonated cola and the other is carbonated drinks. Um, the difference lies in the application of delivery flavoring essence. You can see um, this blue table. In this case, a um, Japanese manufacturer of Star Starbucks, um, actually this, um, this non-compliant product is, is um, Starbucks branded, and uh, it could either remove caffeine from the product and find a substitute, or simply replace the flute flavored essence with the cola essence. And this is a natural mineral drinking water. If domestic importer and overseas exporter don't know the difference in regulations of prepackaged drinking water and the natural mineral drinking water, it is easily to make wrong Chinese label. Who knows there will be two standards for just a bottle of water. The product names are different. The mandatory labeling content are also different such as the water source, the concentration of total soluble solid, major positive ion. It is impossible for me to point out all the risks for food exporters, and we need a case-by-case -case study evaluation and advice to get things done right. And I also noticed that today we also have organic food enterprises. So I'm um, touching upon organic certification. At present, New Zealand has this mem memorandum of equivalent org organic certi certification with China. Therefore, organic cert certified food don't have to apply for organic certificate in China if it is uh, imported from New Zealand because we recognize their certification system. For other countries, if you sell organic food to China, you will need to let qualified certification entity to certify your products. If you still want to use the organic claim or mark on the label. And many foods can apply for organic product certificate, including cereals, fruits, vegetables, juice, milk, egg, jam, wine, beer, 
and so forth. Please refer to the catalog of organic food certification. And at last, I want to share this news, very heartbreaking yet enlightening, as reported by a TV program in Hunan province on May 11, 2020. A local maternity and baby store sold a protein solid beverage. The product is an amino acid based solid beverage, falsely advertised as an alternative to infant formula for those allergic to normal milk powder. Currently, five babies have been identified as having an adverse reaction to the consumption of this product. Unfortunately, the illegal practice that led to this issue is not an isolated incident. To further clean up the chaos in China, this niche market, on May 15, 2020, the state administration for market regulation issued another notice to detail a specialized program to crack down on advertisements of solid drinks, pressed candy, tea substitute, etc. Nearly all food categories that are frequently misleading consumers. As a food compliance advisor and account manager, I do hope enterprises have the awareness of compliance and establish brand reput reputation for the long run. That is also consistent with our company's slogan, value in compliance. Thank you, I'll leave time for you guys to, dis to discuss. And um, if you need compliance assistance, you are welcome to reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. I do not see questions coming in. Uh, please feel free to, to type in. Um, we have one question um, that it's about pet foods, but I guess that uh, for pet food, it follows a different uh, regulation, if I am correct. Um, maybe Anna knows better, but uh, uh, for its nature, pet food is considered animal feed. So it should have other other um, com compliance rules, and uh, I guess we we can send the links related to this um, later. Um, another question coming in from Edgar um, about beer. Um, if he asks um, if I find a local importer in China, do we still need to change the label to Chinese? And if yes, uh, do we just need to put on the label that contains barely malts and hops, or is there any other regulation? I think you can also read the question just in case you do not uh, understand uh, what I'm reading. And do the different beers need to go to laboratory to be tested for alcohol level? Where is the question? I um, in the chat box, not in the Q&A. Um, chat box. Nice chat box. Otherwise, I can send it to you. But uh, yes, please. Mm, I okay, I will send it to you directly. Um, but while you uh, you receive it, uh, uh -huh. check. Probably you just received it again. Um, yeah, but, uh, I see now. Um, for, uh, firstly, I needed to. Um, I want to address that pet food. Pet food. Uh, question. Actually, yep. pet food, um, you are right, pet food is um, regulated by a different department. It is regulated by our uh, Ministry of Agriculture because it, um, it is a type of feed, you know, and the pet foods are required to obtain, uh, obtain your import license. Import license, it is something like um, register your, um, your pet foods Ingredient your pet your pet food ingredients. That is your formulation. You need to register this formulation. And besides this, you also need to register the factory. And at China customs, China customs will also uh, regulate this. And also, um, similar to the meat and dairy products, pay attention to the um, pay attention to the animal epidemic um, alerts. Okay, perfect. 
um, I guess Ken received the, the answer, but in case he has, he wants to know more, I think he can um, get in touch with us or, um, and we will forward the question to Anne. And about the beer, um, let me take a time to use. Probably just to give it a start, um, yes, the label needs to be in Chinese um, when the product is in is imported in uh, in China. Um, I guess you can uh, tell us a little bit more about the content of the label itself. Um, yes, uh, yeah, uh, you're right. It need to be Chinese label. Um, every every product, if whether it is imported or produced, um, circulated in China market, it need to be um, had to have Chinese label because the consumer are Chinese. And uh, um, for the detailed detailed rules like um, any other requirements and uh, the labor laboratory tests, it needed to um, we needed to refer to the beer. Mm, GB standards for detailed requirements. If it says, um, uh, if it says there are requirements for the um, alcohol level, then I think you need to um, test the alcohol level to make sure um, you meet the quality. Thank you. I'm not sure whether um, Edgar has some further question on this. Um, otherwise, you can send us um, an email if uh, you have questions that come to you later today and we will be happy to answer them. Um, I will probably wait a few minutes more to see whether further questions uh, will, uh, will come in, uh, probably here. Yes, um, there is another uh, question about the organic certificate. Um, if you go to the Q&A box, um, Natalia asks if uh, companies need the confirmation of a European organic certificate in uh, China. Do I need a confirmation of the European organic certificate in China? Um, I I don't I don't know if I get get you right. Um, do you mean that you you want to? Um, you want China to rec recognize a uh, EU organic certificate, or um, or you mean uh, you need a European organic certificate proof when you sell to China? Let's and see. Because if you want to sell to China, and uh, if you are not from an uh, importer from um, New Zealand, then actually current rules says that if you want to say your product is organic, then you have to um, be certified in China as organic or, or you are not allowed to use. Rafa here wants to share something with us. Yes, uh, can you hear me because I switched the microphone. Very well. Okay, uh, uh, what Anne is saying is perfectly correct I mean, the organic uh, certification from Europe, if you put that into the back label, China Customs will say, we do not recognize this certification. You need to apply for the organic certification that China has, okay? Uh, let me go back to a commercial aspect, non-regulatory. What some brands do is they remove the organic claim from the back label, okay? They do not make any legal claim about being organic or not because that implies a process in China which takes time and money. Actually, Rich24 could take care of that process. And in the meantime, while you get the organic certification in China, you make the claim in the front label, which is not as legal as the back label. Uh, this is a problem that also happens or used to happen with gluten-free that Anne knows a lot. I'm not sure if there is a standard for gluten-free in China, 
but we have in Europe. So it's confusing to put it or not in the back label. But for organic, the certification of Europe is not recognized by, by China. Actually, I think the certification they have is more tough than the European one, curiously, but unknown small. Okay. Thank you, Rafa. I'm not sure if Anna wants to add something more about this topic or um, if Natalia has uh, further uh, thoughts about this or questions, um, but we're here to answer in, in case you have, Natalia. Um, in the meantime, um, we have a question from Krista who asks um, about organic food, whether it has attraction on the Chinese market and uh, if the claim let's say of organic food has uh, is important for customers or if it doesn't make any difference at all um from my point of view i think uh, organic food does make more and have more attraction in china because um, now we are experiencing consumption upgrading and you know uh, like um, organic infant formula it has um, much it is more premium but parents as long as they can afford this they will buy organic infant formula and uh, as to other organic food i think um since um china cust customers uh, consumers are now um, pursuing more healthy and more um premium more quality i think uh, organic food will, will be more competitive very good. I guess it answers the question of Krista because uh, she follows up um, asking about vegans product sector, uh, whether it is a growing uh, market in China or, or not. Because we know that in China, the meat sector is, uh, is a big market. Um, but what about vegan products? Um, I'm not so familiar with some vegan product because I'm not a fan a fan of artificial meat or something like that. Um, I, I think um, but currently the artificial meat is very popular in China. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure that um, the market performance of Beyond Meat um, is good or not. Um, I think it needed more I think it, it needed more um, effort to to look into this market. Yeah, I mean, I think that we can look into this for you, Krista, but uh, generally speaking, I, I am also seeing um, an increase of interest towards uh, towards these products. But Krista, feel free to get in touch with uh, Rafa or me, and we can uh, provide you with more um, details about this. Um, going back to the um, uh, organic certificate, Anne, can you, um, we have a question about the, um, the um, estimates if you could give us an estimate about how long is the process to get the organic certificate in china um uh, i'm not so familiar with this certification process because our our company is not a qualified um, entity to um, to conduct this certification process hmm. but if you want to know maybe um, maybe in the future if you want to seek this on certification, I will um, contact qualified um, entities for you. Yeah, I guess this uh, this could be useful because probably um, uh, many question uh, many companies would uh, are actually interested in knowing more. Uh, but again, as uh, as Rafa mentions uh, mentioned before. Um, you could also look into the opportunity of uh, not claiming the organic in the back label, which generally speaking is the legal label, uh, but to simply mention it in the, um, in the, in the main label uh, at the front of the, uh, of the product, um, because consumers would recognize it, but when it comes to customs, you would not have uh, any, any troubles. But again, we will uh, look into the uh, estimate times for this and, uh, and inform me all the companies interested in, uh, in knowing this. Um, is there any more question? Let's see. 
we we have uh, we have time for you uh, if you have. So we are uh, we're glad to receive questions. If uh, not, I, I, give me a sign that you do not have. But uh, yes, Anna, you wanted to share uh, something. I'm just thinking of that the gluten-free claim. Yeah. Uh, just not just now, um, Reva mentioned this um, gluten-free. Actually, um, if you can prove supporting materials to prove that this product is gluten-free, it is um, it is legal to use that. Okay. And very good. Don't have to, it doesn't have to do something like certification. Okay. Thank you for um, sharing this with us. Um, I'm not seeing any question coming in. Um, just uh, give me a sign whether you do not have any questions. So we start probably wrapping up with uh, some takeaways probably from Rafa if he wants to uh, share something. I see you uh, logging in again. Okay, Rafa has no more to share. Um, if you all also um are clear on what has been discussed um until now or if you have any further question you um can send us an email mm, you see here uh Anne's, um email address and uh, for mine um i will probably type it here i will probably type here mine and rafa's one just in case you do not have it and uh, feel free to uh, share all the questions that you might have. Uh, we also have created a um, WeChat group to share the presentations. I guess that uh, Anna, can we share your presentation too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. We can share the PDF. So if you if you have WeChat, just um, add me. Uh, I will share my uh, ID again. And I guess we can uh, wrap it up here. Um, thank you very much, um, Anne, for tuning in from uh, from China, from Hangzhou. Um, beautiful city. So once you will be in China, do visit it. And uh, thank you very much to Rafa as well for his introduction. Bye. Bye-bye.